<clears throat> so tonight we're going to talk about vectors. So what are vectors? Does anyone know? No, not points. Lines that never end? No. Lines that have uh, magnitude and direction. Yeah, magnitude and direction. So what do we use vectors for? Um, what, what could be the measure of magnitude? Speed. Speed. Or force. No. Um, you can tell it where to go and it figures out the vector. Um, so, so basically, a vector is usually either a speed or a force in a certain direction. And so, how do you think we could draw a vector in AutoCAD? Without looking at what's on the screen, doesn't help me when I block that, huh? Um, so what do, what, what do you think I've done here? Those three lines are vectors. So I'll give them a direction, right? How do you think I represent the, the amount of force? Yeah, how long it is. So like right here, I've told you one inch equals ten newtons. So now an inch on the drawing is equal to 10 newtons. So if the line was two inches long, how much force would that be? 20 newtons, 20. right? So you just multiply the length by 10 to figure out what the force is. <coughs> so, so I've got something here. I've got these three forces acting on it. What do I want to find out? The resultant. So what is the total of all those forces put together, right? So how would you do that normally? Okay. You'd use that T word, right? Trick. You need to figure it out. How do you think I'm going to do it here in AutoCAD? <coughs> what? <laughs> What's that? No, no, no button for it. <laughs> they said button forehead. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's kind of right. <clears throat> so what we actually want to do is we want to put them all so that they're all kind of working with each other, right? So we're going to take the bottom of one and put it on the top of the other one. So we put them start to finish all the way through. So I'm just going to take this one. And I really don't need those angles because it's drawn on there for me. So I just have those vectors. I'm just going to move that one to there and move that one to there. Does the order matter? No. So I could have done, got this one still and added the other one two on. It doesn't matter which way I do it, as long as I put them all start to finish. And now where's my resultant? Yeah, from here to there, right? So I could draw a line there. I'll put that on my resultant layer. If I want to find out about that line, I'm just going to go to list. Type list. So now that's going to tell me down here that the length is 16.1715, so my force would be 161.7 newtons, right? So just multiply that by 10. So 161.7 newtons. The angle is 49 degrees. So the angle up is 49 degrees. And then there's my x and y components of that force. So just by moving them around, drawing a line, going to list, I get all that. Pretty easy, right? That's it. So if you ever have to do <coughs> vectors in your physics class, draw it. Until you get to your test and then you can't use can, you have to try and do the C word. 
which is, will not be nearly as precise, because now I'm four decimal places exact. If I went up into my units, and I want it to be at eight, now I have it to eight decimal places. And so I can get it as exact as I want to, and I don't have to do any rounding. That is a perfect eight decimal solution to that. Um, same thing with the angle. If I told the angle that I wanted it at eight places, it's actually 48.56. So looking at 49, it was kind of way off. But now I've got it all the way to eight places also. So I can be a lot more exact with it. Even though those lines were, were pretty just uh, <clears throat> So those were perfect lines at 100 newtons, 80 newtons, and, and 40 newtons. <clears throat> that, that result isn't a nice, nice round number. By drawing it now, I get that full precision. I don't have to worry about all the rounding that happens when I'm going between steps doing the math. <clears throat> but, and this was good because all of them were, they're a coplanar. They're a coincident, means they all had one point in common, and they're a coplanar, so they're all on one, one plane. Are forces <coughs> like that all the time? No, right? So we might have something this, where we've got this force acting in the x direction, this one acting in the y direction, and this one acting back in the z direction. Right? So if this was our x, our y, and then looking at it from the top, you that going backwards into the screen from the point in the z direction, how would we solve that to figure out that length? Let's do it easier. <laughs> and these are all numbers in, a, in one inch is 100, 100 newtons, so that's basically, so that's 10 inches long, three inches long, eight inches long. But how could I represent that <clears throat> in AutoCAD? Are they a negative number or no? <laughs> I can move these all into here, right? So I can figure out the the x, y component here, or the x, y component here, and then the, the z, x component here, and then have to try and combine it. Or once I had that, I could do a, I had that line, then I could go to an edge view of it, right? So I could take this, so that would be, in that view, so this is the same line. <clears throat> and then I figure out a true length view of it and everything like that, right? <clears throat> so if I figure out true length, then I can see how long it actually is, and I can figure out angles and distances. Um, is there an easier way? Yeah, take it, do it in 3D. We haven't done 3D in this class. Um, but we'll do a, a real basic intro to 3D <coughs> right now. Um, because the best way to solve that would be to do it in 3D. Because in AutoCAD, we do have X, Y, and Z axis that we can work with, right? And so the easiest way would be to draw in what I just did. That line there. And if I look at it, uh, so I'm on, on my XY, and the Z is flat, because everything's at Z zero right now. 
but that's really supposed to go back 10 inches, right? So if I just pick on that line, and I go to properties, if I tell my NZ, I drew it from here to here, right? So my NZ, I tell it to be negative 10. Here it looks the same, but now when I look at it, uh, I hate AutoCAD's. see it's it's going backwards in the Z. Yeah. So that's the easiest way is just to go in, pick it, go into the properties and tell it that you want it to be a negative negative distance. So now here it's telling me my X component, my Y component, my Z component, which I already knew, right? Because I already had that on the drawing. And now I know my total length and my angle. So that's the angle here. So if I click on that line and I list it. <clears throat> so now I see my 3D length, my angle in the XY plane, angle from the XY plane. <clears throat> and so I kind of I see all that now. So that that actually has a, a force of 1300 newtons in that backwards direction. And I see that? Just by hitting that point, dropping it back into 3D, it saved a lot of work for it. Yes, no. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> no? Let me go to a new drawing that doesn't have all this other stuff in it. <clears throat> straight up. That's the X component going straight across. Yeah. And then this is my top view showing where my X or where my Z would be going. And so <clears throat> I just drew the line basically like I would have before. So if I did this like I did the first one, I'm just going to move that from here to here, right? And I'm going to draw a line okay. from there to there. Okay. And then in order to give it the negative distance. I, I clicked on it, went to properties, and told my NZ to be at negative 10. Okay. And it was negative 10 because it was 1 inch equals 100 newtons, and that was 1,000 newtons, so that's 10, or 10 inches, and it's going backwards, so it's negative, right? So now when I... <coughs> I get this thing to work. There, so you can kind of you can see it there that it's going backwards now. Now does it make sense? So 
So I just told you to go straight back, which it did. And so now I can just measure that, that line. at that same angle. So let me go. So that was 45 degree. Uh -huh. If I go to this and I list it, the angle from the XY plane is 315. And then it's good until three decimal places, but then after that it's off because when I put it in, I only put it into three decimal places. So that's why it's off there. I measured the distance from from that point to that line. And then wait. So I measured that distance. And did the same thing I just did and told it to go back. But now because I just I used a measurement, I lost some of, some of my precision. So I really, really, I really would have wanted to be able to, to draw that line at that angle. And does anyone know how I could do that? Anyone use 3D before in AutoCAD? How, how can I do it, Josh? UCS. Yeah, I can change my UCS. So my XY coordinates. In AutoCAD, you can only draw on the XY. So right here, we have our X and Y coordinates. And you can only use the draw commands on the XY. And so, in your coordinates um, for angles and things, only work on XY. But I can change that XY over. this one in here. And I go to look at it in an isometric view. So now I have my x going this way, my y going that way. I don't know if this is, you guys doing okay? Yeah? No? Um, and so what Right now my X, Y is there. If I go over here to view, and these buttons here, this button, I can rotate around specific axes. So if I click on the flyout, I can rotate around an axis. So right now I want to be able to hinge it down like that. 
So I'm looking at the top. So I'm working on the top plane. So I want to rotate around the X. So if I tell it X, <clears throat> and then the right hand rule, if you point your thumb in the direction that's positive on the axis, your fingers tell you which direction is a positive rotation. So I got, if you put it in regular AutoCAD, when you're looking at it straight, if you put your thumb up, your fingers are going counterclockwise, right? Isn't that the same angle, the direction that angles work? Counterclockwise is a positive angle. So the same thing here. I point my finger in the X direction. I want it to go backwards, so I want to go negative 90. So I'll say negative 90. So now I'm on that direction. So I can draw a line from that point at at what is it? Oh, this is, this was two, one inch equals two hundred newtons, so that was a thousand. So it was five inches, right? At five angle. 45. Okay, now it's about the 45 degree angle there. So now I'm looking at it from the top view. I have my XY axis there. You guys see that? If I move that line there, show to see. Look at what I have in the top view. Is that the same thing? Now instead of having it in a separate view, I actually have it in 3D on the part. So I can just take that there and draw a line from that corner to that corner. So now that's, there's our results in, in 3D. But is it? So kind of everything we've been doing all semester, you could do this way too, right? If you had a top view so you knew how far back to measure it, you could do it in 3D and make finding true length and stuff a lot easier. Because then you don't have to try and find the view for it. You just make it in 3D and then you just measure it. Okay. Uh, 4B, next semester, is a class where you learn how to, where you actually spend time in AutoCAD 3D. So if you want to get more into the AutoCAD 3D, 4B would be the class to do. Uh, so, questions on this? All right, so that's that one. So something a little bit different. So this one here, I just got a tripod, and we have a force going down on it. So in reality, it's the forcing on top of it, probably pushing down. So something like that, right? We got different legs going, something pushing down on it. <clears throat> so on our on our diagram, we we start our vector at the point and have it go down. And now these are the actual lengths of those legs as we have them drawn, and then that's the length of the force. So now what we want to do is we want to change these lines from being the length of the actual physical leg to being the length of the force. We can measure it on our force scale. So we can measure it according to that instead of just in, in inches. Does that make sense? Yes? No? You guys need a break first? So you find like the true length of each line and then... No. Because we don't really care about the true length of this, because that, right now it's the physical length. We care about the length of the force. So we'll find the true length 
later after we either shorten it or expand it to figure out what the real force is. That's because that's giving us the direction for the force, for the vector, but it's not giving us what the force is, what the length of the force is. Yes. So isn't that finding then you're finding the true length of the, of the force, force that yeah. You can use or scale. Yeah, but but so it might be shorter than this, it might be longer than this. And then actually let me I'm gonna jump to the end and then I'll show you how to get there. Yes. Well that makes sense. Somebody makes some sense. So we, we are gonna find the true length of those. But what we're going to do basically is we're going to make this into a cube using the three lines we already had. So we have those, those are our edges, those are the legs of our, our tripod. And we're going to use those to make it into a, a cube. Wow. But we don't, we need to find the right length first. And so to find the right length, what we're going to do is we're going to find where this line crosses the plane so we can find this corner. And from that corner, we can construct the cube pretty easily. So what we're going to do, we're going to figure out if there's a plane that's parallel to this, this plane, where it would go through this line. And that will give us this end point. And then from this end point, we're just going to draw all the purple lines are parallel. We're basically just going to copy this line there, copy that line there, and and from here, from our bottom corner, we still have, we have the kind of the opposite. So this line goes to the bottom, that line goes to the bottom, that line goes to the bottom, and so that's how we that's how we find that that this parallel plane from the top they'll find our cutting plane. So, how you guys doing? Need a break? Yeah. Okay, we'll take a break. Let your, your, let your brain kind of... Then we'll come back and we'll work on this one. It's actually... I've been working with Brady for years. He's a little good It's not really that hard once you get into it and see how it's done. Did the experience...